So I'm going to be talking to you about making the case for deep poverty. Um, and by deep poverty, we mean people with income or resources below half their poverty threshold. Um, and this is a statistic that is traditionally reported in our official poverty report. And so in truth, we included it in the SPM report just because we wanted to mirror the statistics in the official report. But I want to spend a little time talking about why it's interesting to measure deep poverty. Um, and I want to look specifically at SPM, deep poverty, talk a little bit about data quality and measurement issues, though that's been covered pretty thoroughly. Um, so this is the first figure that we have in the SPM report. And um, it basically is poverty rates using the official measure and the supplemental poverty measure. And most of you are probably familiar with this chart. We have the SPM rate is a little bit higher than the official rate for all persons, um, lower for children, and higher for working age adults, and quite a bit higher for the 65 and over population. But not everyone is satisfied with poverty rates when we're thinking about policies and we're thinking about um, the poverty population. Um, so headcount indexes or poverty rates um, can't tell us all the information that we're interested in. So to give an example, um, here are two countries, country A and country B, and there are four individuals in each of the countries. And then you can see what the incomes are of those four individuals. And just looking at the incomes, you would think that country A is worse off in some sense than country B. The poverty line is $125, so the poverty rate or the headcount index is the same for both countries. Um, and it's not giving us any information about the distribution of income below the poverty line. So if this is the case that we have, one of the most efficient policies that we could design is to give a dollar to person two in country B, because then we would be reducing poverty by half for that particular country. But we may not think that that's the best policy that we would want to design. So a lot of people like to use the foster Greer thorbeck indexes to measure poverty. And this is the expression. Um, here the uh, income, it, Y is uh, incomes, Z is the poverty line. And alpha is a parameter that changes what we're measuring. So if alpha is zero, this is essentially a poverty rate. We're basically just counting the number of people who are poor. We're only looking at people whose incomes are below the poverty line. Um, and dividing it by N, which is the total population. If alpha is equal to 1, then we have a normalized poverty gap. So we're basically looking at the distance between the poverty line and the incomes that people have. And we can see that if we're calculating gaps in this, in this example, country A is going to look worse off than country B because we're now taking account of the distribution of incomes below the poverty line, even though the poverty rates are the same. If alpha is equal to 2, we're basically um, calculating a severity measure. So it's basically allowing us to be more concerned about the poorer person in the distribution. So in this case, we're just looking at country A. We're going to transfer $20 from person one to person two. Um, we're going to have the same poverty rate. We're going to have the same average poverty gap. But because it's now a squared poverty gap, we're going to be putting more weight on the lower income person. So the poverty, the normalized gap um, is going to tell us that country A in period two is now worse off because we are concerned about people who are at the very bottom of the income distribution. So I've calculated these indexes 
for the um, poverty measures, the official and the SPM. And what we see is that for the headcount index or poverty rates, this is what we've seen um, before. With the normalized poverty gaps, we can see that the SPM is below the normalized gap of the official measure. So we are basically taking account of the fact that when we include those non-cash benefits, even though they're not necessarily making people less poor or bringing them over the poverty line, they are being brought up from the bottom of the distribution. And we see the same result with the squared poverty gaps. These are the FGT indexes for children. Um, and again, we see that poverty rates are lower with the SPM, even more than normalized and squared poverty gaps. For the aged population, we see exactly the opposite story. Um, we know that the SPM rate for the elderly is higher. We also see that their gaps are higher with the SPM and the squared gaps are higher. This is basically because the main benefit that the aged people are getting is Social Security. It's a cash benefit. It's in both measures. And so what we're doing different with the SPM for this group is subtracting medical out-of-pocket expenses. So we don't show the FGT indexes in our Census Bureau report. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than we thought we would put in a Census Bureau report. So what we show are the um, income to poverty threshold ratios. So this is a, a figure in the report. Um, the bottom blue chunk of the bars are um, the proportion under each measure of people in deep poverty. And so we can see in this chart again that the poverty rate for the SPM is a bit higher, but the proportion of people in deep poverty is lower. So we're capturing the fact that those nine cash benefits are bringing people up from the bottom of the distribution. Again, the same thing for children, an even bigger difference for the two measures and for the age of population. So in a sense, with the income to poverty threshold ratios, we are capturing information um, using deep poverty about the distribution of incomes below the poverty line. So just to look quickly then at the, um, the deep poverty rates of the two measures, um, we can see that the the um, bars here are a little bit different from what we see with poverty rates. The SPM D poverty rate is lower than the official rate. The same for children, but also um, the difference in the working age adult measures. And we can look at these a different way then and look at the deep poverty population by various characteristics. So in this chart, I'm showing the composition of each population by male or female. At the bottom is the total population, then the, um, under the official poverty measure, the SPM and the deep SPM measure. And what you can see here is that there's slightly higher proportion of males in that deep poverty population than the SPM poor. We can look at the composition by age, and as you would imagine, um, a lower percentage of children in the deep poverty population, a higher percentage of working age adults, slightly higher percentage of um, 65 and over. By race, we see a higher proportion of whites in that deep poverty population. Um, lower percentages for minority groups, the Asian group is not statistically different between the deep SPM and the SPM rate. By family type, we see, not surprisingly, fewer married couple families, um, more male head, no spouse present families, 
and the female had no spouse present, families are not different between the deep SPM and the SPM populations. By region, we see a lower percentage in the Northeast and a higher percentage in the South. And by work experience, we see a really high percentage of individuals who are not working in the deep poverty population. So a word of caution, there's a lot of work that suggests that moving down that income distribution, our data are getting a lot less reliable. Um, and uh, we need to uh, encourage caution as we move down to the very bottom of the income distribution with the quality of the data. And also to remember that in our sample frame, we're not including unsheltered homeless people. So as people who are homeless are moving into shelters um, and are maybe moving into households but are still poor, that will increase our poverty rates. Um, and there's some evidence that the homeless population has been declining over time. So that's all I have. Um, use the bottom of the tail of the income distribution with caution. Uh, poverty rates, headcount index, doesn't necessarily give us the information, all the information that we care about, about that poor population. Um, and the deep poverty can tell us about the policy effects for those who aren't necessarily pulled across the poverty line. Thank you.